baby going twice. You need a baby going three times. All right, Unique Baby must have tapped out. So I'm going to tap out Unique Baby. Let me tap somebody else in. Tap in. Woo. Tap in. You got a question? Tap in. I'm only going to do a few. DrUmarJohnson.com. If you're a black parent and you don't know my website, something's wrong with you. If you're a black parent and you don't know my website, something's wrong with you. That's all I'm going to say. Evaluate all. Where's evaluate all going once? Evaluate oh. all going twice. Oh. Where oh. you at, evaluate all? I don't want to see your pocketbook. Oh. I need to see you. Where you at? Dr. Umar. Yes, indeed, love. Yes, indeed. What's going on? Doing? Good. Now, your Here name, with the kids. where you at in the world, sister? Where you at? What city? Maryland. 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 Okay, well, the D.C. training is going to be on February the 8th. February the 8th. Yes, indeed. Now, your profile name on Instagram is Evaluate All. What do you mean by Evaluate All? Because I don't believe in Evaluating All. Tell me about that Evaluate yeah. All. Yeah, I'm, I'm very analytical. I, I try I try to I, I pick a lot of things apart. Okay, because we don't want to evaluate all the children. Remember, psychological diagnosis <laughs> are professional opinions, so we don't want to evaluate all. That's yeah. why I got all these kids in special ed in the first Yeah, that's place. true. So go right ahead, Queen. What's on your mind? That's true. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, uh, wonder, I wondered if you were going to go over um, compensatory education at all. At the training, I will. Yes, I will. Okay. Yeah, I'm interested in that. I'm interested in uh, learning more about compensatory education. I just got um, my daughter off of an IEP um, okay. because it, it was it was bogus. And after a while, I kind of figured out over time that it was bogus. So I've been listening to your trainings um, over time, and some of the things that you've shared work. It actually works in the IEP meeting. Um, so for all of those who haven't tried it yet, haven't haven't have they're not woke yet you might want to get woke uh, because it works a lot of the information you gave worked so i pay attention to um the differences of services that they that they offer under an iep versus the 504 mm -hmm. so i've been looking at a lot of those things and yeah she she uh she came off um so she's she's doing she's she's swimming along oh, without wow. the iep just as fine um diagnosis was what was the diagnosis they gave us uh, uh, other health impairment. Other health other impairment. Health other health impairment for what? For what disorder? Yeah, she doesn't have a disorder. There wasn't. Well, there's no can't. medical. Well, what was the medical disorder? You you got to have a diagnosed condition for other health impairment. Uh, well, they tacked on. Um, uh, what was the behavior? Uh, behavior. Behavior. Uh, be, be, uh, behavioral management. Nah. She had an outside diagnosis of what? ADHD, conduct disorder, oppositional defiant? She had a medical disorder. You can't, in order to have other health impairment, you must have a diagnosed medical or psychiatric issue. If you, if you, because there's no way to get that unless you have that, unless the school made a major mistake. Because OHI is for diagnosed conditions. You got to have a diagnosis. Right. Right. So we started talking about that in the meetings and then people started getting uncomfortable. So that's what I was talking. That's why I wanted to come to the training, because after um, I put that out there, um, how do you come up with that diagnosis? They couldn't really give any answers, but they were more than welcome to just, OK, you want to shut it down? Let's shut it down. You know, that's fine. They weren't really giving her. She didn't have any modified curriculum, modified grading. Um, everything was just like extra time or accommodations that's a 504 if all you right need is accommodations, but she was you should get a 504 now if you're telling me she had an iep for other health impairment and there was no disabling condition then they most definitely owe you compensatory ed right yeah she was only getting um 504 type services under an iep she was getting five well she was you can get accommodations on the iep if you already have an iep you don't need a 504 because you can get accommodations on the IEP. 
However, it can be a good idea to have a separate 504 with accommodations so you have two different ways to protest if they don't do what they're supposed to do. IEP is educational rights. 504 is civil rights, you see. So it's two different umbrellas. One is the school umbrella, and one is the civil mm -hmm. rights umbrella. And so it's good to have them both. If your child... Yeah, needs the, I was the always under the... the accommodation. Now, if the child don't have no problem learning, they should not have an IEP. You must have trouble learning to have an IEP. If you don't have trouble learning, you should not have an IEP. That's the biggest problem in the black community. We got kids in special ed just because they have a disability. You don't qualify for special ed because you have a disability. You qualify for 504 because you have a disability. But to qualify for special ed, that disability must affect your learning. It's not enough to have a reading problem. It's not enough to be deaf. It's not enough to have ADHD, which don't even exist. But it's not enough to have that. It must affect your learning. If the problem does not affect your learning, you should not be in special education. That makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, she's doing well. It took a while. She's uh, say that again. It took a while, but what? took a while to get her off. It took a while to get me woke. I didn't really start looking at a lot of your um, uh, trainings until later, but um, she just recently got off, but it, she wasn't on there that long. She was on an IP for six, six, six years. Six years. What grade was she in when she first got on? Fourth. Fourth grade. And what was the disability classification that made her eligible for special ed? What did they classify her with? Learning disability? At that time, it was SLD. Specific learning disability. For what, what skill? Reading comprehension, reading fluency, math calculations, math reasoning, written expression, oral expression, listening comprehension. What area of specific learning disability? Uh, they had a focus in math at that time. Okay. It was like a, a math, but it wasn't really specific of Mad never, disability. And I don't and I don't blame you because you didn't know, but she should have never been tested in the first place. All she needed was tutoring or better instruction. Most of the time the problem is they're not being taught well or they need right. some tutoring or some practice. But right, she never right. needed the IEP. So yeah, uh you do got a case for comp ed. You because your your argument is going to be my daughter was receiving learning support services for six years that she did not need. She should have never been subjected to special ed. The true reason for her problem was poor instruction. Poor instruction at this underachieving school. So yes, you do have a case for comp ed. Schoolhouse reparations, compensatory education. Okay, well, I, I definitely appreciate the information. I'll, um, you said that children, uh, you don't, you don't um, expect to see children at the um, conference? They nah, can't come we, we want to be there for 12 hours. Now, she's a little older. She may follow along. She may can keep up. But I wouldn't bring young children because it's too much time. You won't be able to focus. They're going to get irritable. Now, with a teenager, that can be a little different. Like, if she's interested in the subject matter, then maybe. Uh, but definitely not young children. She's a little older, though. But not young children. I wouldn't recommend it. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, thanks for all your help, and we'll see you there. I appreciate everything you do. And make sure you spread the word and let other parents know who need to be there because I'm only doing this one time. God right. willing, we'll have the school next year. So this is one and done. If a parent doesn't come this time, uh, they won't get a chance to come anymore. And I'm also going to raise my consultation fee because the training is $50 to learn everything. I don't know why a black parent would not take advantage of that as opposed to paying $100 for 45 minutes to get one problem solved when you can learn right. everything you ever will need to know for 12 hours at $50. It doesn't make sense, but I'm intentionally raising my consultation fee because parents really need to come to this training and learn as mm -hmm. much as they can. And it's not just for parents. Anybody that cares about our children, as long as they are black African people, they are allowed to come. 
Sounds good. I appreciate it. All right, Queen. Be blessed. You too. All right, now. You do not have to be a parent to attend the training. You do not have to be a parent to attend the training. You do not have to be a parent to attend the training. California training is March the 7th. Go on my website so y'all can stop asking me about states that are already scheduled. Go to the website, drumarjohnson.com, and you can see the trainings that we already have. Remarkable Chrissy going once. Remarkable Chrissy going twice. Oh, God. Hello? Peace and love. How are you, Sister Chrissy? I'm good. Oh, I'm so in love with you. I think you're amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you, baby. Where you at in the world? What city? I'm in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. The right. New York State training will be in White Plains. White Man. Plains, New York will be the New York training. So you have to come to White Plains. Oh, I will. I will. Saturday, February the 29th. Saturday, right. February the 29th. That's for all black parents in New York State. The training will be at White Plains. We're getting started at 9 o'clock sharp. I need you in that chair. 9 o'clock sharp. And I'm going to teach you everything you need to know, A to Z. Now, you might want to get a babysitter for the young ones because they're right. not going to be able to sit still for 12 hours long. Sister. No, I'm not going to bring no kids. No, no, none of yeah, my kids. Come, come solo, but baby. Come solo. I wanted to ask a question because I heard the young lady talking about that her daughter had an IP. My son, he's six years old. Yes. Um, he just recently got an IEP. What, what they, grade is he in? He's in first grade. And he got the IEP this year in first grade? Yeah. Can I pull your fingernails out for signing permission to get my little brother tested, Sister Chrissy? Can I pull your fingernails out? So, no, here what happened. He was in a charter school, and he was trying to do it in the charter school, and I, was, I wasn't having it. And then he went to public school, and I guess it followed him to public school, showing that the testing was about to get started. So they gave him the IEP number. He's not in special ed, though. They just Does he have an IEP? Does he have an IEP? Does he have an IEP? then he is a special ed student. IEP equals special ed. Now, he may not be in a self-contained classroom. Special ed is a program, Chrissy. It's not a place. It's a program. So you can get special ed in the regular class. IEP is the program for special ed. So if you have an IEP, you are a special ed student, but you may not be in a special ed classroom but you are still a special ed student. But here's my question to you, though. What, why was he evaluated? What did they classify him with? What disability? Speech and his handwriting. Okay, speech only. So his, spe his, his IEP is for speech only. Right. Not a learning disability. No. Okay, I don't have a problem with that. Because when you have a speech and language impairment, SLI, speech and language impairment, you don't go into a class. You get speech therapy right. from the speech pathologist. Right. Okay, so that's okay. That's okay. okay. Because he gets pulled out, he gets his therapy. That's yes. it. Yes. Now, I thought you yes. were going to say learning disability or some nonsense like that. No. Okay. Okay. If he's speech only, he's all right. Okay, okay. Only. Now, what you got to be careful, though, is that they don't try to add extra disabilities. Don't let them add. Okay. Don't ever let them add. You follow me? You talk right. to me first before they even before you even thinking about letting them add because they're real slick. You got to get reevaluated every three years, every three years for speech. Right. So right. three years from now, they're going to give you another permission form. Right. When you sign that permission form, make sure you write on the form speech only Got with you. an exclamation point. You follow me? You. Speech only. That way you, you can tell them, I'm making sure y'all understand. I'm not giving you permission yeah. to test them for mental retardation. I'm not giving you permission to test them for learning disability. I'm not giving you permission to test them for emotional disturbance. I'm only giving permission for him to be retested for speech and language 
only. So you in a good place. I was going to pull your fingernails you. out because I thought you were saying he was sitting in there with a learning disability in the first grade. But I'll see you February. I will come and see February. you. February. Spread the word, Sister Christy. Spread the word. Hey, little brother. Get as many. Let all the parents know. Bring your girlfriends. Bring them all. Whether they got a weed, perm, bring them all. Bring all the weaves and perms. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, Sister Christy. Be blessed, baby. You too. All right. Now. All right. Bring everybody to the training. Weave, perm, bring them out. If they parents, they need to be there. Gay, straight, lesbian, homosexual, white wife, a weave, perm. This ain't a conscious meeting. I'm trying to train all the parents so they know how to protect their children. That's what this is. So if you're a gay mother, you're a gay father, we're not discussing that. I want to make sure you can protect your children, all right? That's what the training is about. Come learn how to save our kids, okay? That's how this is going. No, I will not be going live from the training. No. The white man don't need to know what the hell I'm teaching, so why would I do that? Stop being lazy. Bring your ass to the training, you lazy ass social network addicts. You lazy ass social network addict. Get off your ass and go to a training and learn how to protect your kids because it's only one tour. One tour and we are done. Erica online going once. Erica is online going twice. Erica is online going three times. It don't matter whether I agree with the parent lifestyle. That's irrelevant for this training. It's very relevant for the struggle. It's very relevant for the struggle, but it's not relevant for this training. This training is to help the kids. Sister Erica, how you doing, beautiful? I'm doing great. How are you? All right. Where you at in the world, sweetheart? So I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina, and yes. we do not have North Carolina confirmed yet for a training. Nice. Shame okay. on Carolina, but go no, right ahead. No, no. Come on. Come on. How many, how many people do you need the space to hold? 100 with tables okay. and chairs. 100 with tables and chairs. That's all we need. It could be the church basement. It could be the community center. Okay. It can be any place. As long as, they, as, long as it's well lit because it's a lot of paperwork. Right, right. But, uh, 100 tables and chairs. That's all we need. Okay, okay. You know you what? Want it, I'm, you want it, I'm Eric? gonna take that on. Yes, yes. <laughs> I appreciate that. Born and raised, I'm a native of Charlotte, so we're gonna work this out for Charlotte. Find us a spot. So North Carolina can get off your trifling list. Yes, ma'am. You, do you have my number, Sister Erica? I do not. Write it down. Two one five. Two one five. Nine eight nine. Nine eight nine. Nine eight five eight. Nine eight five eight. Gotcha. Once you got a spot, you're gonna text me, Doctor Umar. I found a spot. <laughs> Yep. 8 to 8. Make sure they know. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. 8 a.m. to 12 8. hours of power. Okay, 12 hours 12 of hours power. of power. That's right. Okay. We going in. We going okay. in. It's a boot camp. It's in boot fact, camp. I'm going to lock y'all in there. <laughs> I know. That's right. Lock the doors. Put the chains on the doors. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and North Carolina got some very high black male special ed numbers, so they need that training. Yeah. In North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Yes, I don't definitely. think they know slavery over yet down there. Uh, hey, hey. Did you have a no, question or anything, you. Sister Erica? We need you. So I will get on this and I will text you as soon as I have a location with 100 tables, 100 tables and chairs. Well, 100 people, 100 with tables people. and chairs. So let's say they with want to use the long chairs. tables. We sure. can probably put like 12 people around the long tables. Everybody okay. don't need to have their own desk. We can share the table space. Right. Yeah, because we yeah. need to share. We need more community. Yeah, we can I share. Can... Black folks got to learn how to share, Queen. Yes, we do. Indeed. Okay, yeah. so I got you. I will work on this, and I will text you as soon as I have a location. Thank you, Sister Eric. I look okay, forward to so, hearing from so you. So give me like give me like a give me like five business days before okay. you call out North Carolina's being trifling again. <laughs> all right, I got you. <laughs> okay. Got all right. You. All right, baby. Take care. Thank now. you. Bye. All right. So Sister Erica is working on Carolina. 
Sister Keisha is working on Illinois. Sister Julie is working on Michigan. Where is Colorado? Where is Washington State? Where is the black family in Oregon? Where is Arizona? Where Where is Where is West Virginia? Where is Tennessee? Louisiana, February the 1st. It's a lot of blacks in Colorado. Denver, I've been there before. Sold out lecture. Imazara. Imazara, Imazara, Imazara. Where you at, queen? Going once? Going twice? She declined. Might have a white boyfriend. Tech, tap back in. Tap back in. You got a question? Tap in. I got a few more minutes to be with y'all. Get them donations in. Let me see if we got any donations in today. Get them donations in. Dallas, Texas, May 2nd. Connecticut might be April 11th, soon when the host stop playing around. Washington, D.C., February the 8th. Super Supernova Jones, going once. Supernova Jones, going twice. Supernova Jones. Going three times. She got a white boyfriend. Who else? Tap back in. Checking out the donations to the school right now. What we got? St. Louis, Missouri. I have not heard from y'all. Kentucky. I have not heard from y'all. Stop being trifling. Nicole Leg. Where them, where them donations at? Go to your cash app right now. Dollar sign FDMG school. Go to your cash app right now. Dollar sign FDMG school. Go to your cash app. I'm screaming out names right now. Shout out to Sister Tiffany. Sister Tiffany from Ifa Tunde University, $200. It's pending right now. I'm sure it'll come through, though. Nicole Leg, I'm tapping out. Somebody else can tap in. Kentucky, where y'all at? Imazara, Imazara, you're back on. Where you at, queen? Going once? Going twice? There you go, beautiful. How do you say your name? Ima. Imazara. Imazara. That's a beautiful yeah. name. What does it mean? Thank you. Ima in Aramaic is mama or mother. Mama. And then Zara is more um, kind of like a dawn's awakening or like a scattering. Powerful. Powerful. So like a spiritual awakening almost. Yeah, uh, exactly. Where you at in the world, sis? I'm in Dallas, Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas, May yeah. 2nd. I'll yes, be training May the 2nd. black parents on May 2nd, uh, but you don't have to wait that long. You can come to New Orleans on February the 1st. You can come to Mississippi April 18th, but the Texas training is May the 2nd. I will see you in Texas. We homeschool, but I know a lot of Powerful. people who can't homeschool. So Powerful. it's still valuable information, I think. Oh, yeah, very good, because you never know who you might need to help, even if your children remain homeschooled until they graduate, you may come across a family that needs some help. And the purpose of this training is to make all of you a walking, talking, Ifa Tunde advocate minus the drama. Do you follow me? Yes, so I absolutely. Need y'all to be able to, because you know, I can't drama. be everywhere <laughs> all the time. So if I can make all of you guys knowledgeable of the information and the process, 
y'all will be able to really help me help our parents. So this is a really important turnaround training. Absolutely. White husband. My husband's not white, y'all. Yeah. He's, he's Igbo. He's Nigerian. Uh, Nigerian. Uh, yeah. My ancestors are from Nigeria. I love Nigeria. Yes. Yeah. Anugu State. What, what state is your husband from? Do you know? I don't know. He's, okay. he's working. I don't know. Okay, no problem. No problem. Yeah. My, my favorite places in Nigeria are Anugu State, Port Harcourt, and Lagos. Okay. Uh, you been yet? Have you no, been I've yet? only been to Kenya and Tanzania. I've only oh, been to You got to get to Nigeria. You got to get to know, Nigeria. I know. I know. I need to. I you need to. Time. You got time, <laughs> Queen. You got time. And any question you had? Um, I guess I do have a question about organizing within homeschools. I feel like a lot of people, they can't homeschool themselves. But I homeschool. I can take your kid in. But I do know that. Um, a lot of people want you to register with the government, with your co-op. I nah, nah, with the government, <laughs> really? For what? For what? For, For what? what, right? But okay. see, that's black people still wanting to be accepted by white people. Right. Still wanting to be accepted by white people. Um, this is what I would like for you to do, though. At the May 2nd training, okay. bring a flyer, brochure, bring whatever information you would like to share with other parents who will be attending, because they'll be coming from around the state of Texas who may want to be a part of your homeschool network. So make okay. sure you come prepared, because I'm sure there will be parents there looking for alternatives. I hope for so. Their children. I hope so. Exactly. So we, we can help you really, really grow your homeschool network. We can do that. That's what we're going to do for you on May 2nd. And uh, if you remind me, we'll give you a couple minutes to even talk about you know, what you do and what you can offer to other people's children while we're there. So that's no problem. Awesome. Well, that sounds good. Thank you again for your time. All right, Queen. And spread the word. Let all the parents know. May 2nd, Dallas, Texas, Martin Luther King Center. And they can register on the website. I got it. All right. Thank you. All right, you. goddess. Take care now. God bless Bye. you. Bye. All right. And you know what I'm hoping? I'm hoping that we see black men at these trainings. Because although 85% of our children are being raised by mothers, it is important that black women see black men engaged and involved. It is important that black women see black men engaged and involved. When you don't see black men at these trainings, then it means that we as black men are comfortable letting our women fight the whole miseducation system all by themselves, and that is not acceptable. Brothers, y'all need to come on out. Stop letting our women fight this fight for our children all by themselves. Black men need to be there. Black women, bring your boyfriend, bring your baby daddy, bring your snuggle buddy, bring your husband, bring your fiance. Black woman, get a ticket for you and get a ticket for him. Bring your fiance, bring your baby daddy, bring your husband, bring your snuggle buddy, whoever he is, bring his ass with you to the train. You understand? That's how that's working. Let me see if we got any donations. Y'all acting cheap today. We still only got one donation. Not one of y'all got on the cash app. Not one of y'all on the cash app. I got a half a million Insta. Sherrod Sadler's donated $1. Thank you, brother Sherrod. $1. Next time, make it $2, my brother. Where them donations at? Dollar sign FDMG school. Where them donations at? Come on, y'all. Come on. We trying to give black boys a new reality. Let's get it done. Let's get it done. Dollar sign FDMG school is the cash app. Dollar sign FDMG school is the cash app. Okay. That's the cash app right there. Dollar sign FDMG school. All right. Dollar sign FDMG school. Friday, 
Somebody could tap in. I'm going to take one more. Go ahead and tap in. Diamond Hood, $10. Thank you, Sister Diamond Hood. Brother Oluwa Tobiloba. Odebo, $1. Thank you, my brother. Make it $2 next time. Volley Girl, $10. William Plain, $2. Joshua Lindsay, $2. Tiffany Griffin, $200. Bricks, $5. Cortland Galloway, $10. Run them donations. Dollar sign FDMG school. Let's get the school built. Let's get the school restored. Universal Melanin going once. Diane Dixon, Charles Stewart, $2. Talani Fisher, $10. How we doing, Universal Melanin? Hello, Dr. Umar. How are you, brother? I'm well, Queen. Where you at in the world? I'm in Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn! I hope to see you in White Plains, New York, the last day of Black History Month for the New York State Train. I'll be there. For sure. Talk to me, Queen. What's on your mind today? I have a question in reference to my grandson. So sure. He doesn't have a learning disability. He's just bad as hell. He don't listen to the folks. He's not interested in what they have to say, but he doesn't have a learning disability. They give him an IEP and they want to um, have him tested. When I come into the classroom, I sit down with him. There's no problem with him reading, doing math, any kind of work. It's just when no one's around, he's, he's out of control. What grade is he in? He's in the second grade now. He's in the second grade. You need a behavior plan. You need a behavior plan. So one of the things we're going to go over at the training is the behavior plan. You don't have that much time, so I want to give you three pointers. Number one, you want to call a meeting to find out what is the teacher's classroom management program. What does the teacher do to reward your grandson for good behavior and punish him for misbehavior? Where is the classroom behavior plan? That's number one. Number two, you got to crack down on discipline at home because you know how they do our boys. They're not allowed to be boys. Black boys are not allowed to be children. They're treated like grown men at five years old. So you have to crack down on your discipline. When he don't have a good day at school, there must be a consequence that day. If he has a good week at school, there should be a reward at the end of that week. So you have to make sure you are consistent with your rewards and your consequences, and you must have both. <laughs> You must okay. have both, okay? Is he spoiled? Um, a little bit, not too much. Like, I, I don't that. get, I don't get crazy with it. I have taken a lot of things away from him because of his behavior in school, and I need him to understand the importance of knowing how to read and write and function. Like, okay. I understand. Like, I'm asking, him, is he bored? Are you bored? It's like, yeah, sometimes I get bored, but. He just he's just not interested. I don't understand. And I don't have the capacity to homeschool him. I have a 13-year-old who I've been homeschooling since he was in second grade. Okay. And I have the capacity to pull him out of public school and homeschool him. This is my son's child. And um, I don't know. I try my best. I don't know really, you know, what I can do. So I definitely need assistance or some outlook on some avenues I can kind of visit. Now, here, here, here's okay. another thing, too. Here's another thing, too. You may have to hire you, a New York psychologist, to go into your child's classroom and observe that classroom because you cannot assume that the teacher is telling you the truth. You cannot. They are racist and they don't like our children. So you have to find you a psychologist, a behavioral specialist, a social worker, to go into the classroom and observe your grandson. This is important because until you do that, you don't know if the teacher is exaggerating. You don't know if the teacher is fabricating. You don't know what's going on in that. The whole class might be a zoo. The whole class might be, you understand, undisciplined. So you have to find out what she's not telling you. And the only way you're going to find out what she's not telling you 
is to hire someone else to go into that class and observe your grandson. That's going to be very important. Very okay. important. When do they get out for school? May or June for the summer? Uh, here in New York, they get out May 26th. They get out May 26th. So we have well, February, sorry, March, I'm sorry, April, they get out May. We June got 26th. I'm sorry. June 26th. June. Yes. February, March, April, May, June. We got five months left. Okay. Uh, what we want to do is get him to the finish line, get him to that summer vacation and see how he does next year when he's a little bit older and a little bit more mature after having had the summer to grow a little bit. So we want to try to get him to that finish line as quickly as we can. But if it looks like they're pressuring you too much, get that classroom observation. And then that person that observes your grandson in the classroom will go with you to the school leadership meeting to discuss his behavior. And at that time, that person might say some things that exposes the teacher more than your grandson. He might say the whole class is disorganized or you don't pay no attention to this young man or there's other kids who are misbehaving and you don't do nothing to them. There's a lot that goes on in the classroom. There's a lot of dynamics. So I really recommend you get somebody going in there to observe them. This should only cost you about $100, but it will be money well worth it. Well worth it. Okay. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. All right, Queen. And I'm going to look for you on February 29th in White Plains. You'll definitely see me. I'll be there before the doors open. I'm usually <laughs> All right, early anyway. <laughs> yes, ma'am. God okay. bless. All bless right, you. now. Shout out to Sister Shawnee out of Baltimore. Hope you're doing well. C. Chavis, $10. Serious Nick, $5. JD, $20. Sarah, $25. Milton, $5. Charles Stewart, $2. Diana Dixon, $10. Talani Fisher, $10. Ronnie Fletcher, $1. Timothy Reed, $5. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Let's get the school up for the grand opening. I want to have a grand opening FDMG this summer food, music, workshops, conferences, networking, activities for the children is going to be powerful on E5 Toon Day Avenue in Wilmington, Delaware. E5 Toon Day Avenue this summer is going to be lit. FDMG will be the place to be. Trying to get me to Rochester, hit me up. 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. Cash app for the school. Dollar sign FDMG school. Cash app for Dr. Umar is dollar sign Dr. Umar Johnson. Y'all raised $492 in just 30 minutes. I love y'all for that. Shout out to Sister Tiffany Griffin. She was $200 of that, so she's the donor of the day. Shout out to Sister Tiff. You are the donor of the day. Thomas Grant, $20. Elizabeth Brooks, $10. Willie Henry, $10. Bricks, $5. Keep them coming. Let's make it happen. Keep it coming. Let's make it happen. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism, and I'm signing out. One love, y'all.